This podcast is brought to you by Gorilla Wear Malta. Okay, so anyway, so I just wanted to make this one thing uh, sort of apparent. Obviously, this is will be our third podcast, and uh, you know, b- by trade, I am not a podcaster. I am a coach and a life coach and a wellness uh, person. I'm just here to help people become their very best self. So I do that best in a one-on-one setting when I'm sitting in an office looking at somebody and I'm able to f- feel what they're going through and I can sort of just relate to the energy and the experience around me so as as a podcaster you know it's the conversation is with me and a camera and it's not what I do for 38 years it's just been me and other people so I you know I'm just saying uh, off the top you know as these uh, podcasts come down they will get better as time goes on Uh, I'll get more refined in this and uh, looking into a camera will become my best friend. But for right now, if it seems a little bit, uh, um, you know, um, you know, whatever, it's just because uh, it, it's going to take some time to get used to it all. But uh, I just want to let you know about that, and I promise you things will get better. How does one choose the right coach? So if you're looking to uh, change your life um, and... Uh, seek professional help in doing so which i suggest everyone do Uh, i i don't think there's a person out there who should even uh, think twice about actually hiring a personal coach Uh, it's just like you wouldn't think twice about sending your child to school because they need to learn and when it comes to um, what happens inside of a gym and what is happening inside of your body and what's happening uh, with the state of your health and your wellness, I think that should be left uh, up to a professional and yourself, creating that sort of team relationship because I think it's just completely important to ultimately learn who you are and know the things about you that you may think you do know, but from my own experience in the last 38 years, a lot of people have no clue on what's happening with their body. I know it because I, I, I deal with it in consultations all the time. Um, and there are a lot of people that are seeking personal trainers because they do want to get better because they've tried things for for decades. And they're not you know, getting better. In their own opinion, they're getting worse. And they can't figure that out. You know, After 15 years or 20 years of trying diets on their own and whatever the case is, They're not looking better. Uh, They're not even feeling better. They're looking inside the mirror and saying, "Uh, you know, who is this? Like, I don't recognize this person. So ultimately, they make the decision to get a personal trainer. Well, how do you do that? Like, are you going to go, you know, and, and look on Facebook and find all the personal trainers out there and just say, well, I like the look of that one? Or are you going to go through, uh, you know, some sort of directory or are you going to, you know, listen to what someone else has to say? Finding the right personal trainer is a very personal thing. It is something that um, has to start with some type of connection that um, of relatability. So, you know, I don't care who you speak to, but in speaking to someone, you have to feel that this person is being authentic with you, that they are sharing with you ideas and tips and, uh, you know, are, is forthcoming with information that makes sense to you. Um, that they can sort of sense who you are and what you're about and and talk to you about the things that are not necessarily um, so obvious. Um, Like things like, you know, your own personal life and how things are going at home and how things are in your relationship and how are things with your work and, you know, and like what's happening, you know, with your history. What have you done? Have you, you know, have you struggled with eating disorders? Have you, do you struggle with low self-image and self-esteem? Because a trainer is not just someone who puts you into the gym and tells you to do two more sets of this and 15 more reps of that. 
a trainer is someone who has to intrinsically know who you are and what buttons to push to motivate you and what uh, signs that they need to see that you're going too much or you're going too far. Uh, you know, maybe that you're getting close to breaking uh, or when you need encouragement, they need to be paying attention. And this is not something that can necessarily be taught in a classroom. So, you know, trainers will go get certification because they, they take a course. But that doesn't mean that they have, you know, the understanding of another human being. That doesn't mean that they understand, you know, the ins and outs of just living life and understanding that those parts of life is what will motivate you and encourage you and keep you mo focused and motivated to do the things that you need to do in the gym and to change you. So you need to f look for, you know, relatability. And, um, and then obviously other things like education, like they need to be able to educate you and teach you about things that you uh, think you know, but make you realize that what you thought you know you don't know so it's not just about a look though that would be the next thing I'd say is that if you're going to hire a trainer and they don't provide the first two things I just mentioned and then they don't even look like they should be a trainer they look like they just were out looking for jobs and got rejected by other companies and they just walked into a gym one day and said hey listen I'm, I want to apply and they said okay I mean, you, you need to have a trainer who looks the part. A trainer is someone who walks the walk and talks the talk. You know, like they have to lead by example. And this is something else that is so important because, I mean, it would be like if your personal trainer is overweight and you found them outside before you walked into the gym having a cigarette and you looked on their Facebook feed and they're out on the weekends and they're partying and drinking and all of these things. That's not a personal trainer to me. Personal trainer has to, he's, he's living by example, leading by example, like I said. So if he's leading a lifestyle that doesn't make a lot of sense for health, then whatever he's saying to you, it doesn't carry as much weight, you know? So in my opinion, I mean, there's a lot of things that you need to look for when hiring a personal trainer. So those are some of them. Um, experience is another one of them. Um, I, from my own personal experience, I can tell you this. I have trained lots of people for competition, and they came in knowing absolutely nothing about macros. They don't know anything about eating plans. They don't know anything about uh, training systems. They don't know any of these things. They're coming solely because they're desperate for change. And through the wisdom and the experience that I've had for 38 years and the leadership skills that I provide and that accountability that I, I provide and the, the knowledge and they follow, they change. And then they go and compete in a show, for example, and they win first place and they look amazing. And, uh, you know, and the next thing you know, they've stopped working at the petrol station and now they're a personal trainer. Well, there's no experience there. They've learned something in the time that we've been together, but it's not something that's innate in their mind. It's not something that's deep within them. And so this is crucial, is is having experience and time is the only thing that provides that experience time time and working with a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds with a lot of different issues and knowing how to take all of those examples uh, all of that experience and then put that into their client so you know i mean think of it this way if you had to have you know s surgery on your brain because you had a tumor would you want a doctor who's been doing it for 30 years? Or would you pick the young doctor who looks nice, who's been doing it for one year? Uh, you know, in my opinion, I take the doctor of 30 years because I say he's had experience. And that experience is crucial because that experience makes me feel safe. And uh, I, I know that the, the likelihood that everything's going to be fine is going to be high. When someone doesn't have a lot of experience, I think to myself, well, how can they help me? if they don't have the experience to hear the things I'm saying, but more importantly, to understand the things that I'm not saying. So there are lots of things. I could go on and on and on. I could do a whole show on just what you need to be looking for. But, you know, experience, obviously the presentation, the knowledge, and the relatability, 
and that understanding, these are fundamental. And if you have that, if you have that, count yourself lucky because it's rare. It's really, really rare to find someone who can really have all of those things relate to you and then as well communicate those things to you in a clear way someone who's your cheerleader, someone who's your becomes your friend. As a matter of fact, your 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 personal your your coach is even though they are your coach, they're your teammate because they have to want your success as much or more than you want it. Because sometimes if they you know, sometimes you're going to feel like you want to give up or fail or walk away from it all. They have to want it just as much, if not more, to make sure that you stay online. So consider those things when you're hiring a personal trainer or when you're looking for a personal trainer and, and be care, be, be, and, and, and take your time. Talk to a few, hear what they ask you, hear some of the questions that they ask you, hear the way they speak to you, see the things that they try to get out of you. Because if the things that they're trying to pull out of you, you've never heard from someone before, then you probably have a, actually a good person in front of you. Okay, so that's those are just some of the things that I would suggest. And if you you have uh, any comments about that, or you have any questions, you can certainly, you know, put it in the comment list below. How can people find a good personal trainer? Finding a personal trainer, <laughs> you know, is probably the easiest thing to do, uh, because you if you just go to a gym uh, nowadays, this whole industry has taken off like you know personal trainers are like weeds now it's it's very hard to distinguish between a very good personal trainer and just a personal trainer because there's so many of them because it's like the fad thing to do is to have a have a coach obviously going to the gym when you go to any gym especially if it's the first time you go there if you just ask someone behind the counter or you don't even have to ask a lot of gyms will say when you sign up they're going to give you three sessions with a personal trainer. You have no idea who this guy is or girl. You have no idea their experience. You have no, you know, nothing and you don't know the gym either. So you're already feeling flustered and sort of shy and, you know, looking around and feeling awkward because you don't even know what it is that you're doing there and what you're supposed to be doing. So they put a personal trainer onto you. So that's what the, the first way of finding one. But as I mentioned before, you know, you have to find a good one. So just because someone puts somebody in front of you doesn't mean that's the person that you should be taking. If you are, uh, you know, in the gym, um, it's a good bet these days. If you just look at the guy or the girl who looks fantastic, who's training with her headphones on, who's not talking to people, you know, con you know, between each set who's not texting on her phone and who looks serious, I'm, it's a good bet she's a personal trainer because personal trainers, really good personal trainers, um, have a gym etiquette that's unlike others. And that is that they take their time in the gym seriously. They do what they need to be doing. They're there for a job, basically, to take care of their body, to enhance their body, to work out, to crush themselves, to do what they need to do to accomplish their goals and then afterwards you see them you know maybe having a chat and that's usually a, a good place to find one in the gym I, I can't tell you how many times I see some people training in the gym I see that they're doing something that's completely dangerous they're going to hurt themselves because they don't know how to use the equipment and I will approach them and say something to the effect of this look at sorry I don't mean to bother you you know I'm not trying to interrupt you or I, all I want to say is if you if, if you don't mind me giving you some constructive criticism, what you're doing right there is going to hurt you. And this is why. And so then I explain it. I tell them the reasoning behind what I'm saying. Uh, they know pretty quick that I'm not hitting on them. Uh, and um, a lot of times, you know, that will impress them what they're hearing and the examples that I'm giving them and the execution of the information. And they may ask me afterwards, are you a personal trainer? And I go, well, yes, I am. But I'm not here to solicit you, you know, for business. I'm just here because I'm seeing what you're doing. And that's what I end up doing as a personal trainer. You always see these things. You notice bodies. You notice people doing activities that are just completely wrong. Because that's the way we're trained. It's like a dentist. He sees your teeth. It's like a hairstylist. She sees your hair. She knows that you need to do the roots. Uh, and so that's another way, okay? So if you look at someone in the gym and you see someone who is 
involved and dedicated in what they're doing more than likely. Obviously going on social media, you're going to see it everywhere. Everyone's a personal trainer. Everyone's producing online programs. Nowadays with AI, you know, you're here, you're seeing ads and campaigns and promotions. You don't need a personal trainer when you can have AI. Well, listen, AI is garbage when it comes to personal training because A, number one, personal training is in the word personal. It is one-on-one -on -one attention. And that means that somebody is there for you, watching you, watching how you move so that you don't hurt yourself, watching your face, the facial structures, how your muscles are moving, because they know then that you're really trying or you're not trying. They can tell. A good personal trainer knows if you're sloughing off, if you're giving 10% or 100%. They know if you're going to make a, a mistake. They can see it ahead of time. That's why it's called personal training. So AI training is, you know, I'm not going to ever listen to an AI a computer tell me what kind of programs I should do because it's garbage because it's no there's nothing personal about it but of course it's being offered social media is offering people doing online programs and online programs yeah so it's it's a personal trainer maybe I don't know I mean it says it's a personal trainer but you don't really know again I don't care uh, you know there's lots of places to find them it's that's the easy part but as I said before, it's not about finding them that's the problem. The issue is finding one that's good. And I can tell you, I, as I said, I've been doing this for 38 years. I used to be in the gym training my clients, and I'd look to the right or to the left, and I'd see like a, a physiotherapist working with a client, and the client is doing the exercise like this, and I'm looking and I'm watching and I'm saying, oh my God, the, the client is doing the exercise in such a way that they're going to damage their shoulders. I, it's, the, the, the form is ridiculous. And I'm looking at the, the, the physiotherapist who's, who's telling them what to do and they're looking at their phones. So they're on their phone like this and they're not even watching their client who has done 10 reps and they're not even paying attention. This is not, that's the key. That's the key. That's the issue. It's not where you find them. It's who you're finding so that's that's the most important thing but those are just some of the places that you can find a personal trainer and so look look around but keep your eyes wide open and your ears even more open what is your opinion regarding training apps that you can download on your phone some might call me old school because in a way i guess maybe i am old school in the fact that if i want if you want a job done right you have to have somebody evaluating every single thing that you're doing in that moment that's really what a coach is all about so yeah there's lots of apps that will tell you do this do that do this and do that you put in some information and then it just you know creates a plan uh, designed on the preferences that you put in and so yeah okay maybe it's true. Maybe it's okay. I mean, from a sort of a one dimensional point of view, yeah, it sounds good. Okay. The, the app tells you to train five days per week, tells you to do this workout and this workout. Okay. It, it looks good, but that's all in theory. There's lots of things that look good on paper, but then when you walk into the gym with someone and you're watching them and you see that they don't understand movement, they don't understand activation. Activation is where, you know, you're, you, you have to be able to turn on a muscle to contract it in a proper way. You need to learn, you need to know what muscle should be working while doing a, a certain body part. No app is going to tell you that. No app is going to say, okay, hold on a second here. What you're doing right there is going to, it's wrong. Okay, so yeah, so you're pulling, you know, you're doing uh, seated rows and you're using the bar, but your forearm grip is so strong uh, you know, your back's not going to get a high percentage of that effort because your forearm's going to get super, super pumped because of the way you're contracting. So these hands, you're not going to get that in an app. It's not going to be there because it's not watching you. It's just laying things out for you. So it's laying out. It's just, it, it's like you're reading a map. You can read a map. It'll tell you where to go. But while you're on that road, the map can't tell you that all of a sudden, you know, a ro there's a rock slide and the, you know, and the road is out. Doesn't see, you don't see that in the map. So apps are like that too. They're great for reference. They are great for reference. They can give you great ideas on how different plans are executed and so on and so forth. But nothing, not, nothing, nothing beats personal. Nothing 
I, all of this stuff that's going on right now, in my opinion, is just, I don't like any of it, to be honest with you. I don't use it with clients. I don't build plans for my clients using apps or AI or anything. I build plans for people based on what it is that's in front of me, who's in front of me, what they need, what I hear, how I see them operate. That's how we do things. We may go in with a plan and the whole plan may change. I've taken people in and, and for example, we, we're going to start a workout and I see that they're not even engaged. I can see that they're not, I can hear them saying things like, oh, I can't, I can't. As soon as I start hearing these things, the training session is done. We're not going to train. Why? Because their, their mind isn't even in the right place. No app is going to tell you that. When their mind's not in the right place, all that, they, they make themselves vulnerable. So they start working out, their mind's not there. They end up hurting themselves. They're absent-minded. It's at that moment that when I see that somebody is not in the right place, in the right space, it's when you have to act and you pull them aside and you start talking to them like what's going on, what's happening. And you get into the psychology of things and you see that there's, they're having issues and personal problems. And sometimes they need at that moment, better than doing a leg workout or a chest workout, they need encouragement and motivation. And then instead of in that hour, instead of having a workout that may uh, ultimately hurt them, in the end, you have an hour conversation that uplifts them. So they walk away in a better place. So I'm not, a, I'm not for apps. I'm not for AI. I mean, you know, yes, as I said, they have a purpose. But when it comes right down to it, when it comes down to the success of the client, the person who's trying to change, it's not going to come from an app. It's not going to come from AI. It's not going to come from a trainer who's absent while he's standing in front of you, who's thinking about his fight that he had with his partner, who's looking on the phone thinking about what he's going to do on Friday night. It's not coming from those things. It's going to come from someone who is completely engaged in what you're doing as much as you should be engaged in what you're doing. And that, that, that's, that's what it comes down to in the very end. If you enjoyed that movie, then I just ask that you like and subscribe and hit the notification button just so you can get messages for our upcoming videos.